You know, Ernest Holmes, who is the creator of our teaching and our wisdom that we talk about and the truths we share, had so much to give us. Oh, that wisdom, that inspiration, the interconnectivity of all the different teachings and all the truths he shared. Oh, it's definitely his work has made me a better, better, better person. As far as funny, I'm not quite so sure. <laughs> I just don't think of Ernest Holmes as funny. But I'll tell you what, Dr. Jim, who is president of the Science of Mind Archives, actually found a chapter in a book that I don't have. It's called Ernest Holmes the Man. It's a section two, and it says some of his favorite jokes and stories. I'm really not going to share any of them. <laughs> I was going to share this one, but neither Jim nor Kirk laughed. So it says, <laughs> the itching head. The boy was constantly scratching his head. His father looked at him one day and finally said, son, why are you always scratching? <laughs> oh, I think it's so funny. Um, why are you always scratching your head? And the little boy goes, well, Dad, I guess it's because nobody else knows it itches. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not going to tell you that one. So, um, um, but thank you, Jim. It was very fun to read the jokes that weren't very funny. That was the best, for sure. Um, you feel how much better it feels to laugh. You know... Harold, when you said you dedicated that song to your, to your parents, I'll tell you, the greatest gift my mom ever gave me is the gift of laughter. She, she was an amazing woman, not perfect, but a really amazing woman. And through her whole life, I never heard her complain. She had to go back in an older age because... My dad had a big business up on Pico in Los Angeles, a heating and air conditioning business, and boom, the bottom dropped out, and she had to go back and learn computers, which she didn't know much, but never complained, went back to work full-time, did work. Later in life, after my dad passed, um, she ended up with COPD. She was bedridden. She'd lost her eyesight because of macular degeneration, and she lived with us for years. That woman never complained. She just made us laugh. And she made us laugh because she wanted the world to be a brighter, lighter place. And she made it that way. It was beautiful. Well, I passed the gift of humor on to my children, and I wasn't too happy I did. Because they were extremely hard to punish, because they knew right what would get me laughing. And usually, I'd end up laughing. We'd end up laughing. The most recent thing, um, our daughter Deanna owns a... I created an organic uh, granola company, and uh, it's called Nom Nom Nola. And um, she has a co-packer, and she has a distributor and all that now. But she was putting little labels on uh, the packages one day before she brought them, delivered them to a store. And she forgot they were in her pocket. And she does laundry at our house a lot. They have a washing machine, of course, for the baby, but they dry on lines out there. They're pretty, you know, um, environmentally conscious. But they like to use my dryer. So um, uh, I went in my dryer and opened it up, and there's Nom Nom Nola sticks, <laughs> stickers, all over the inside of my dryer. Well, I didn't tell her. I just opened my dryer, and I laughed because it's so funny. Well, she came over. She goes, oh, Mom, look what I did. I got stickers all over your, your dryer. Do you want me to take them out? I said, no. I love them. They make me laugh every time. I, I'm, you know, the tedious job of the laundry all the time. I mean, you love to laugh in the middle of it. It's really good, but... Um, you know, if we really think about it, uh, Joseph Campbell, amazing man, um, he studied the human experience. He studied life, all cultures, studied mythology, comparative mythology, religions. He knew about life. And he said, life has no meaning. That's kind of depressing. But he goes on further. He said, no meaning except the meaning you give it. Then he added this, whatever you do, do it with play. Life is meant to be joyful. He said, participate joyfully in the sorrows of the world. We cannot cure 
the sorrows of the world, but we can choose to live in joy. That's our choice. It's a choice we make. He goes on to say, the world is perfect. It's a mess. It's always been a mess, and we can't do anything about it. The only thing we can do anything about is to straighten out our own lives. And that's why we come here. We find spiritual ways to straighten out our own lives, to do what we can, to be just what, what you were saying, Sage, to be a beneficial presence. That's what we're designed to be. There are ups and downs in lives, all good and bad, in and out, and that's what he said. We participate jo joyfully in the world. We're here for the experience of life, the joys and the sorrows, and we need to learn to say yay to all of it. Yes to all of it, to be able to balance our humanity and our divinity. The problem is we get too stuck in our humanity. And I'll come back to that in a minute. He goes on to say, getting a comedic view of life gives us a spiritual dimension, a spiritual outlook to things. And he said, having a sense of humor saves you. Having a sense of humor saves you, especially when you can laugh at yourself. Now, getting that balance between humanity and divinity, there's a, just six, a six-letter quote that I love so much, and it's by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And I want you to think about this. He says, hitch your wagon to a star. Be firmly planted on the earth. Do not miss this experience, because we grow, we learn. Oh, it's, it's an amazing experience here on earth, filled with all the joys, the sorrows, the ups and downs, the goods and bad. I mean, we know about it. We live it. We're here. But if we have ourselves hitched to a star, we can always rise up to see a bigger perspective. If we're hitched to something else, our rightness, our anger, our virtues, oh my gosh, am I holier than you? You know, if we're, if, we're right, better, if we're righter or better or wronger and lesser, all that stuff, forget it. How about just being in the experience and accepting what is? Accepting life and knowing the way we look at things really decides what meaning you put into it. We can make a difference. I'll tell you the things I think we need the most in getting that getting ourselves hitched to the, a star is patience. If you haven't noticed, this spiritual journey is tough. It takes discipline to look at the parts of yourself you have to heal to be a lighter, better person. You know, it takes discipline, it takes focus. We've got to do that. And we need a sense of humor to open us up. Madeline, I love what you read about humor and laughter, because laughter opens us. We felt it. It's good. It's really good to laugh and open yourself up and make space. Make space for something more. All right, it's time for another joke. Um, let's see, which one should I? I've got a few here. <laughs> which one should I say? Oh, that George Carlin one I made, Save Till Later. It is very funny, but I just don't know if I'm not ready to say it yet. I don't know. I looked up if it was spiritual to say some of that in church, but it didn't answer me. So I, <laughs> anyway, but it's really funny. I'll tell you later. <clears throat> A little girl asked her mother, how did the human race appear? And her mother said, well, God made Adam and Eve, and they had children, and the human race evolved from there. And, oh. Oh, okay. And the girl was fine with that. And then she thought, well, you know what? A couple days later, she thought she'd ask her dad. And her dad said, oh, that's a good question. Well, many years ago, there were monkeys from which the human race evolved. And she goes, oh. Well, she got confused. And so she went back to her mom and she said, mom, I don't understand. You said the human race came from God and dad said they came from monkeys. How can that be? And she said, oh, honey, it's really simple. I was telling you about my side of the family. <laughs> Your father was telling you about his. <laughs> oh, man. Oh.
Pema Chodron, and I know many of us have read Pema Chodron. I love Pema Chodron. I've, I've seen her, and she's, she is a kick. She is so funny. She's just a kick. She's a Tibetan Buddhist nun. And she comes out in her robes, very sacred. Everything's very sacred around her. She has her candles and her Buddhas. And she, I mean, she has a mouth. And she doesn't refrain from using it. She's very, very funny. And she says, lighten up is a spiritual practice. It's something you have to, just as you do your prayers, your meditation, your contemplation, your quietness, everything you do, your walks in nature to see God everywhere. She said, lightening up is a spiritual practice because we must lighten up. And I'll tell you, in our world today, I don't think there's any greater time for us to take the lighter side of life. She said when we get too serious, especially about spiritual practice and we just become serious about everything, it's a killjoy to life. It just, it just puts out the light of things. We need to lift ourselves up so we can handle all the different parts of life. In Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes it says there's a time for everything, a season to everything. A time to plant, a time to reap, a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time for joy, a time for sorrow. There's a time for everything. And if we're lighter, we can hold it and experience it and understand we're in the flow. We're in that flow of life. We need to be there. Now, I know, I've got to share one, one quote I read. I just, it made me cry. I just, well, let me do one other one first. I'll get to the crying one later because we're supposed to be laughing. <laughs> There's a laughter of God, and God is in everything. Hafez says, God is always laughing at the word two. They're not two. It's all one. It's all part of the life experience. All part. We're all one, different expressions of the one. If you don't think God is laughing and has laughter in its soul, look at the animals. The platypus, the kangaroo, the elephant. I mean, how hysterical. They're all so fun. We love them. And it's to laugh to make us realize that life is joyful. Life is here to be enjoyed. Now, this is what um, Meister Eckhart said. If we can take life lightly, I'm saying this. I'll tell you what he said in a minute. If you can take life lightly, you can find the, the lightness, not necessarily the humor, because we have to be a little careful for humor sometimes. We're not here to laugh at people. We're here to laugh with people, to make life lighter. So we have to be careful. There's a time for seriousness, a time for laughter. But if we can learn to lighten up, here's what he said. God told me a joke. And seeing God laugh has done more for me than any scripture I have ever read. Going from your head to your heart. True laughter comes from the heart. Ernest Holmes says, plant so your own heart will grow. Sing, because it's the thing this starving world needs. And laugh, because it's the most purest sound. I'm going to ask our ministers and practitioners to come and start here and just make a line out, a little space in between. Just a wall of prayer, a wall of truth, a wall of understanding that life is inherently good and so are we. Life is inherently good and so are we. We get stuck in hooking ourselves to the wrong things. So while our beautiful maestro plays the music, if you're in your seat, that's fine. But come, come and create a wall down wherever you are. See a, a minister, practitioner, and just to say, I let go of. We release those, just all that's in our heart and mind to know the truth, that right where we are, God is, love is, good is. We are there. We are there as individuals, and we are here as a beautiful community that holds the truth that we are one, that God is all there is, and love is the only answer. Mm.
as we hold that, we simply give thanks for, to all our practitioners and ministers for the work they do and for this beautiful understanding and community that comes together in love, in light, and in healing. When you leave today, go out and have a good laugh. You deserve it. And so it is. <laughs>